Welcome back. The legal battle over President Trump's travel ban is dominating the headlines, but it has been a busy week for the administration. Congressional Democrats have been working to block the president's cabinet nominations despite the efforts. Jeff Sessions was confirmed as Attorney General. Betsy DeVos was confirmed as Education Secretary. Steve Mnuchin was confirmed as Treasury Secretary. And Tom Price was confirmed as Secretary of Health and Human Services. Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch is also apparently calling the president's attacks on the judiciary disheartening and demoralizing. And joining us for more on President Trump's third week in office is Kevin Griffith, the vice chair of the Sarasota County Democratic Party, Christian Ziegler, state committee man for the Republican Party of Sarasota, and Zach Anderson, the politics editor for the Sarasota Herald Tribune. Here's what we're going to do. Christian, in 25 seconds or less, how would you describe this past week? Um, successful. I think that you look at the nominees, he's got his team uh, put together. And it's exciting. Kevin, in 25 seconds or less, how would you describe this week? Uh, unsuccessful <laughs> and uh, followed by many unforced <clears throat> dramas brought on by the Trump administration and his team themselves, uh, more so than the Democrats or any outside opposition. And Zach, you're the guy with, who does not have a dog in the fight. How would you describe the week? I don't think it's been a great week for Trump, you know, to have these setbacks. Trump's whole image is about winning. It's about uh, strength. And uh, these were some setbacks for him to have the uh, immigration ban overturned. I don't think it hurts him with his supporters. But I think if these things start to add up, it sort of looks like a little bit of amateur hour at the White House. <clears throat> I couldn't help notice the other night you tweeted and I, yes, I'm following you on Twitter. For the record, I am not tired of winning yet. Keep up the good work, Mr. President. Yep. And obviously, he got uh, most of his cabinet through this week, which is obviously good news for him, although it was not that easy. Um, on the other hand, you know, starting last Friday night, you had the federal judge who was appointed by George W. Bush temporarily blocking the, the immigration travel ban. Then on Saturday, the president blasted the judges, calling the judge a so-called judge, uh, you know, on Sunday, the, uh, the president equates Russia's political violence under Putin to violence in the U.S. On Wednesday, he criticizes Nordstrom for dropping his daughter's clothing line. And then on Friday, you know, uh, or yesterday, uh, the appeals court unanimously uh, refused to reinstate the travel ban. It seems like, objectively, it has not been an easy week. Well, I think there's a difference between running a business and running government, and Trump's figuring out that um, it's frustrating dealing with not only a dysfunctional government, but also a liberal court system. And you look at the Ninth Circuit, it's well, about as the, liberal the, as you get. But with two judges appointed by Republican presidents. Yeah, but it, it, I mean, as we've seen, both Democrats and Republicans will appoint someone and they don't necessarily turn out as planned. And I think that's what you're seeing here. Um, the Ninth Circuit, uh, again, they're overturning a ban that m Americans overwhelmingly support. Um, when you look at the polling data. So I think Trump's pursuing uh, policy and issues that the American public's behind. And meanwhile, you have dysfunctional Washington trying to block it. You have a liberal court system trying to block it. And that's exactly why Trump won, is because people are tired of Washington and government as usual. And that's the role he's playing. Kevin, despite all this, the president, as we said, has gotten most of his cabinet uh, members passed this week. It doesn't matter if it's close. The Democrats could really, in the end, only do one. Yeah, and uh, at the moment, the Democrats uh, aren't in power, and so you're going to see uh, Democrats do what they're able to do, and that's to uh, delay some of them, but more so to reach out to their uh, congressmen and senators, as well as uh, you've seen even locally here uh, people rallying to let them know that, hey, our voice is going to be heard. But let me, let me step back real quick to what Christian uh, was, was speaking about. You know, Trump is 0 for 2 so far in front of the courts. And I, as a lawyer, this is a proud week for me. And not, not because of the politics of it, but because of the checks and balances of it. And the thing is, it could go to the Supreme Court and it could go a different way. I don't know. But the process works. And, and also, two of the four judges, the district judge and then the Court of Appeals judges, uh, were Republicans. So you can't, you can't always play the victim and say it's a liberal court. It's not a liberal court. Okay. I mean... The district judge was appointed by a Republican. That's not a liberal. That's well, a Republican. I will tell you, the Ninth Circuit, I think they have an 80% uh, turnover record with the Supreme Court. So they typically 
uh, put down rulings that the Supreme Court comes back and says, ah, you guys are totally out to lunch. And I think you would see that with this. If it was challenged, I don't think Trump's going to take it to the Supreme Court at this time. Um, but what Kevin was saying there is the Democrats, as you mentioned, Alan, they're not in power. Their only move isn't just to delay, but it's to obstruct government. And that plays right in the hands of the American public of being tired of Washington not getting anything I done. I want to get into that more in the next block. But first, Zach, do you get any kind of sense in, in our community with the, the, the local political activists that you talk to on a daily basis that, that the mood or the momentum has changed, at least in Sarasota and Manatee and, and the Tampa Bay area? I think definitely. When you look at just politics in general, usually the party in power is uh, usually under fire, that you know, it's a lot easier to be uh, against something than it is to defend something. So you're definitely seeing more movement behind uh, the liberals uh, right now. You see uh, you know, the Women's March on Washington, and, and you had a huge uh, you know, corresponding march here in Sarasota. I do think there is more momentum right now. It's building, whether it gets up to sort of Tea Party levels, it remains to be seen. But I also think that Trump supporters are digging in they haven't, he, they haven't been knocked off the president at this point. As Christian brought up, uh, you know, they look at the Ninth uh, Court of Appeals and they say that's just a liberal court. So there's a lot of ways for them to sort of dismiss what's happened and say, uh, you know, it's not really the president's fault. He's trying and, uh, you know, we're going to stick with him. All right. We're gonna, just going to take a uh, short break here. We're just getting started on our discussion of President Trump's third week in office. We'll continue in a moment but after a check on our weather. So stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing President Trump's third week in office. Our guests tonight are Kevin Griffith of the Sarasota County Democratic Party, Christian Ziegler, a Republican State Committee man, and a Zach Anderson, political edi editor for the Herald Tribune. Uh, we, we start talking about the, the Democratic uh, grassroots uh, that we're seeing right now. Uh, Jason Chaffetz, a, a congressman from uh, Utah, he had a town hall meeting last night. It got, you know, pretty, uh, it was packed. Uh, there were a lot of people there pushing him in terms of the repeal of Obamacare, I believe. Uh, Gus Villarakis, a local congressman from Pinellas County, he also uh, had a lot of opposition um, last Saturday. And I'm wondering if, Zach, are you hearing anything in terms of Gus, uh, of, uh, you know, Burn Buchanan's. Uh, yeah, uh, Congressman Buchanan, it's interesting you bring that up because I just got an email today from somebody who was asking me, uh, I haven't heard of any town halls for uh, Congressman Buchanan. Have you heard of anything? And it, it seemed to me like it was somebody who wanted to get out there and protest. I think people are hearing about these protests at other town halls that congressmen are holding. They're looking for the opportunity here. Buchanan has not scheduled any town halls since Trump got elected, and maybe because uh, he, he might be concerned about what might happen. He has typically held a lot of town halls. In fact, he took a lot of pride in opening himself up to the public and has held dozens of town halls since I've been at the paper. So it's interesting that he hasn't at this point, but I do think that there are people who are looking to make these events into a sort of a political spectacle for sure. Christian, I know that uh, Speaker Ryan met with House members uh, this week and basically uh, suggested that they beef up security and be prepared for this. It would seem to me the easiest way to avoid it is not to have town hall meetings for a while. Well, I think it's somewhat laughable to criticize Vern for not having town halls. I don't know if there's a member of Congress that's held more town halls than Congressman Vern Buchanan. But that was then, not that. Well, not no, now. this is as of even like a, probably a month or two ago. I mean, this isn't like he took a break. Um, they do them in waves. But when you look at like the Betsy DuVos thing that happened today. Right, and we have some video of that. All right, we'll talk about that in a second. No, we, I mean, you, you could talk about it because we're. Well, I think what you're going to see on the video are two things. Number one, Democrats are frustrated because both their leaders and their parties failed them. So now they're taking their efforts and they're taking their aggression to literally the schoolhouse. And you have Betsy DuVos, who's trying to go into a public school in, in Washington, D.C. And you look at Washington, D.C., the second part of this is Washington, D.C. is double the cost in national average, but they get half the results. And if anyone can help them, it's Betsy DuVos, and they're blocking her from right. going. But, but two point, points here. I, I think we sh uh, showed earlier in the, the broadcast, Arne Duncan, the, uh, Obama's education secretary, pleaded with people not to do that because it's wrong. But I would imagine others might say what's good for the goose is good for the gander because back during the Tea Party phase in 09 and 010, a lot of Democratic 
members of Congress had their town hall meetings th that... Well, those are town hall meetings. I, I have not seen a secretary of education blocked from going into a public school. And when you look at the protesters, these were the teachers union. It was also Black Lives Matter protesters, probably funded from some organization that it needs to be found out who funded them because they had printed signs. It was very well organized. But again, this, so is, a the public, this is a public, public school. And she's trying to go into a public school and she was blocked physically. I will tell you, if that happened at an abortion clinic, what would the response be? Those people would have been arrested right away. Kevin, do you see a, a building of momentum and uh, grassroots interest in terms of, from area Democrats? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm getting emails from people that I know haven't been involved in the past who are asking uh, how can they get involved. And it's not just about getting involved, but it's substantive. They're saying uh, about Congress, Congressman Buchanan. Actually, I think there was an article in the Herald Tribune this past week where there were 50 people there. Uh, talking about the uh, the refugee ban uh, and so yeah absolutely I mean people are out there and they it's a health this is America you know democracy is a good thing this is a healthy outlet of getting uh, your voice to be heard by your representative let's remember Vern Buchanan works for us the people so it's his job to listen to his constituents not just those constituents who agree with him. I, I think it's a healthy process. I agree with Kevin, but it, it crosses the line when you start blocking education secretaries from going into public schools to get their job done on our, our behalf. And number two, when you're blocking service members from going down to the National Mall to watch the presidential parade, I mean, it gets a little ridiculous, a little bit aggressive, and that's when you cross the line. I'd, that's when I'd need certainly to talk agree about. with the nonviolent. Protests should be nonviolent, and I would applaud the 10,000 people who showed up for the Women's March here in Sarasota, and even the Sarasota Police Department thanked them. And, and we were thanking them. It was totally nonviolent and 10,000 people spontaneously. Let, let's get back to the week that was in terms of, of President Trump. Yes, he got his, his um, cabinet members. Um, he got into it, on the other hand, got into name calling basically with, with uh, the appeals court judges who were deciding the, the travel ban case. And a strange situation where apparently his Supreme Court justice is uh, making his own comments, which the president is now denying. There were a lot of things that were going on this week that it seemed like he was fighting with a lot of people who support him, in, including uh, Senator McCain, who he called, uh, said that Senator McCain is used to losing. And I, Christian, I wanted to ask you about something that David Brooks, who is a, a conservative uh, columnist for the New York Times wrote uh, today, which says Donald Trump didn't have to have an administration that was at war with everyone but its base. He came to office with a populist mandate that cut across partisan categories. He could have created an unorthodox coalition that led to unexpected alliances that would have been uh, broken the logjam of politics. Agree or disagree? Well, I think what you're seeing Donald Trump do, I don't know why everyone's so shocked with the actions he's taken, because for 18 months he campaigned on them and he's coming in and executing them, right? And when you look at Donald Trump and, and whether he's at war or saying stuff about other individuals, I mean, he's aggressively out there trying to get an agenda done, an agenda accomplished. And if he wasn't doing that, the media, just like yourself, you'd be criticizing for not doing what he but, was saying. What he was goes, do. What, how does that advance his agenda to go after Nordstrom's or Senator McCain or well, Senator Blumenthal? I, I think it's clear you have a candidate here that does not filter his message through three, four, five comm staff, he speaks what's on his mind. And again, he did that during the campaign and the American public, they elected him president after doing that. And I don't think, I think if he got into office and he changed and there would be another you know, set of criticism now. So it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback, um, but if the role was reversed, you guys would be criticizing him for not doing it. Zach, I wanted to ask you almost the, the, the same question because obviously our area went overwhelmingly for Donald Trump but again, uh, as David Brooks says, um, he seems to be at war with everyone but it's his base. Yeah, and Jeb Bush famously called Trump a, a chaos candidate. And we all know what happened to Jeb Bush, but I think there is some truth to that statement. I mean, there is a sense from this administration that it's very unpredictable. It's very loosely organized. There's a lot of leaks going on. There's a lot of people, even his own Supreme Court nominee apparently was pushing back against some of the things that he was saying. And so there is a sense of a little bit of chaos, a little bit of disunity in his administration. Now, Trump thrived on chaos during his campaign. He was not the most disciplined candidate and he did fine. We'll see if that works once you get in the White House. But remember, you're referencing his base, that he's, he's governing for his base. His base elected him. 
his base is frustrated with how Washington's been working. So of course he's going to change well, it. His, it. But it, instead it, of but instead of reaching across the aisle and starting with an infrastructure bill or paid family medical leave, which is what he talked about and which is a working class type uh, populist message policy, which he ran on, he hasn't even talked about that. They they're they're on these unforced uh, dramas of. Uh, McCain and <laughs> we, we have let, that's uh, a, Alan that's the first time I've heard anyone criticize but, him for not getting something done he is getting well, everything the, the that question his campaign becomes done. if you're done. warring with all these parties what are you getting done right now I mean I think you can look at his record in the past three weeks and there's no one that would say that's what Kevin right here no one would say that he hasn't gotten his agenda passed that he's been trying uh, to some execute. of these things like the immigration ban I mean these are not unpopular things. Uh, I, 80 something, 86 percent of Republicans I think support it. There's been a little bit of move a, away from it because of I think maybe the way that it was implemented and uh, independent uh, support for it has dropped. But this is not uh, an unpopular policy per se. So he has moved forward with some things that he talked about on the campaign trail that um, have a significant amount of support in this country. Alan, I think but going back to what Christian Anzac just said, in this chaos candidate, and you can't govern with chaos. You can't just put out a executive order and expect it to pass if it hasn't been vetted and run through the channels that it's supposed to run through. And that's what you oh, see oh, now. I, 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 you know, finally, I, I, you know, every new administration has its its bumps uh, when they get into office. But you, you look at what happened with uh, Kellyanne uh, Conley uh, yesterday. Uh, Conway talking about uh, the Ivanka Trump uh, clothing line inappropriately in the White House briefing room. Now uh, with uh, General Flynn today, the National Security Advisor, comes the news that he may well have been talking about sanctions with Russia before he took office, which would be technically a violation of the Logan Act. These are not things that are helpful to a new administration. I think the only legitimate criticism that you can have of Trump is that he's done too much, maybe a little too soon. With that said, on the flip side, that's exactly what the American people want because politicians, they always campaign on one thing and they never execute, All and that's right. what Trump's doing. Let's take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about the controversial practice known as conversion therapy. Stay with us. Welcome back. See you in court. That was President Trump's response to a court's decision to uphold the stay on this travel ban. Can we expect him to keep flexing his executive authority? Will our judges take him to task? Our just guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Kevin, I want to ask you about that, but I also want to ask you whether you believe local Democrats can take advantage of some of the chaos that's going on right now. It's our responsibility. It's not about taking advantage, but it's about bringing a message to the voters of a clear policy uh, alternative to Trump and holding it accountable. There's two things, right? Uh, you can be against something, but you also have to be for it. And we're taking that on. We have an issues committee at the local Democratic DEC. You saw and Zach wrote about where we went to the county commission and spoke out on the Siesta Promenade issue. Democrats are excited and motivated. Uh, Christian, I have to ask you, do you hope and wish that somehow the president can tighten up his messaging so we are not talking about all these other things from department stores to, to fake news and he can continue on uh, the, the, his agenda? Well, I think the people talking about him are the members of the he's media tweeting. that are highlighting he's, him. He's yeah, but you're highlighting things. it, you're talking about that. But meanwhile, as you guys are discussing all of those issues, he's executing the plan that he campaigned on. Point by point by point by point. And to be honest, what do I care about a president? I, I think the only thing that I care about is the actions are the actions that are getting done. And he's executing to a T on what he campaigned on, what I supported him on, and what the American people supported him on. Looking from afar, Zach, do you think uh, over the last three weeks, the last week that uh, the, the administration has been effective in terms of, of starting to bring about the change it campaigned on? You know, I was just talking to a Trump supporter today about this, and I was saying, you know, the, the immigration ban, you know, just got overturned by the court. It's, do you hold that against Trump? He, he pushed this through, and uh, obviously it wasn't uh, on legally sound, at least according to this one court. And she said, no, I want him to do what I think is right, 
and uh, you know, if, if, it, if it doesn't work out, that's fine, but I want him to do what I think is right. So I think his supporters are behind him still. I think it's going to be really hard to push them off. I think if it looks like he's too distracted, if there's too much chaos going on, that could start to become an issue for him. Okay, we'll <clears throat> leave it there. But before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, conversion therapy. It is also known as reparative ther therapy. The idea is to turn homosexuals straight. Six states have banned the practice, and now Florida is considering legislation against it. Since it is mostly done by faith-based groups, they would be exempt under the First Amendment. We asked you what you think, and Sandy Hess Snyder writes, if people want to pay a therapist to try to change their lives, why are people against it? Besides, who are we to say whether it's good or bad? George Capello writes, are you serious? Why on any level would you condone any part of conversion therapy? What year is it for you really born this way? And Suzanne Wyatt, uh, Wyatt writes, please ban this practice. It ruins lives. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, want to watch past roundtables discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Kevin Griffith is the vice chair of the Sarasota County Democratic Party. Christian Ziegler is a Republican state committee man for Sarasota County. And Zach Anderson is the politics editor for the Sarasota Herald Tribune.